Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, September 29th, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Jan today took a look at, well, uh, how much uh, of outdated TLS uh, versions are still out there on the internet, in particular SL version 2 and uh, 3, but also how many servers have already adopted TLS 1.3. Turns out uh, globally it looks pretty good. Uh, the prevalence of SL version 3 and lower is sort of in the single uh, digit uh, range, but well, uh, that's not true for all all countries. There are a couple of countries that really stick out by having still a relatively large percentage of servers that support versions of TLS as far back as SSL version 2. And probably somewhat unexpected that the countries that still run a lot of SL version uh, 2 are not necessarily uh, big uh, internet users in the first place. Tunisia, Kazakhstan, Marshall Islands, Guam, and Gabon are some of uh, the leaders here when it comes to SL version 2.0. I believe Kazakhstan also had some uh, legal issues around encryption recently, so uh, this uh, may play a role here as well. One issue, of course, may also be that uh, some of these countries still have a significant population of users with older operating systems, like, for example, Windows XP, which may not support, uh, for example, TLS 1.2 or 1.3. And in other uh, TLS nodes, uh, the Electronic Frontier Foundation announced that it will uh, no longer really support or offer its HTTPS Everywhere extension because, well, it has sort of become redundant because that's now the default behavior of many browsers or browsers can easily be adjusted to, by default, upgrade to HTTPS. So no more need for this extension. And talking about uh, browser add-ons, apparently for the last seven months, a uh, browser add-on was available on Mozilla's website. So this was a Firefox uh, add-in claiming uh, to be a SafePal application. SafePal is a wallet that's available for Apple and Google Play as a native uh, application. Apparently there is no official uh, browser extension associated with it. And the browser extension by that name that was hosted by Mozilla apparently had one function and one function only, and that was to steal users' uh, cryptocurrency. A number of uh, review indicating uh, this uh, were left uh, with the application over the last uh, couple of months, but uh, no action was taken until a user complaint on Mozilla's uh, forums. So again, uh, this extension does not appear to be related to uh, the Apple and Android application by the same name. And given all the Microsoft Exchange vulnerabilities uh, we had to deal with this year and also how actively they have been exploited, Microsoft is looking for new ways to make it easier uh, for exchange administrators to defend against uh, these uh, threats. So with the September cumulative update for Exchange, Microsoft released Emergency Mitigation. This is a new Exchange server component that will once an hour check with Microsoft if there are any new emergency mitigations that should be applied to the particular Exchange server. Note that uh, this service will not actually apply patches, but it will apply workarounds for currently detected threats. This requires that the IS uh, rewrite uh, system is installed on the server, which actually installed as a prerequisite with the service. And for example, it may add a new IS rewrite rule or disable an exchange service, or in some cases disable a virtual directory or app pool. This tool will be available for mailbox servers. It will not be installed on edge transport servers.
And of course, in order to use the tool, your Exchange server needs to be able to connect to the internet in order to check the specific URL that Microsoft provided for any workarounds. And Microsoft also provides tools in the form of PowerShell scripts to check which mitigations are currently enabled due to this feature. And you are able then to disable some of the mitigations or also to reapply them. So pretty neat. And I think if you're an exchange administrator, you should take at least a look at the tool and see if this is something that you would like to have enabled. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.